Hi and welcome to another video brought to you by TurboCamaro.ca. Today we're going to be going over the carburetor configuration and some minor troubleshooting. Uh, I'm not a carburetor expert, however I've watched enough YouTube videos now and have enough previous experience to be able to diagnose most carburetor related issues and I have one here that I'll go through with you. Uh, first you can see here it's a Holley 600 CFM double, power, double pumper uh, with mechanical secondaries. Uh, I've removed the choke as you can see here, it's just sort of just fast idles just sort of kicking around there. And otherwise, it's it's set up generally correct, but keeping in mind that this is the straight six Chevy 250 engine, so this carburetor is on the very large size for it. Um, that being said, uh, if you looked at previous videos, you'd know this has been recently rebuilt. It's got a uh, sort of a mild cam in it, at least for this engine, and uh, it's you know ported and lumped and everything else so the the flow is better than than average but that being said it's still a large carburetor so what I want to do is just sort of bring it back to basics I want to go through this thing as if I had not just rebuilt it and just make sure that everything is set correctly I'm mostly interested today in uh, transfer slots uh, configuration because it was originally set in the 30 to 40 thousandths range so that the little transfer slots were square like they should be however the uh, I've played with the idle so much and the timing that it, I think I've actually got them too large now and I could just go and guess and pull the idle down and see if that fixes it however I think that that's going to uh, cause me issues the main issue I'm troubleshooting here is that I'm getting a lean bog on initial acceleration uh, it's not uh, horrible but it's to the point where I need to be careful with my acceleration or I could uh, I can backfire. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the carburetor right off and we'll get a better look at this. Here, you can look at the fuel bowl. I've got a, a metal a hollow float in there. Uh, they're great floats. Uh, I think they're the best floats actually, except they're not the best for a turbocharge application because these metal floats are known to compress uh, under boost. And of course, if that happens, um, you're going to have all kinds of issues with well, everything, all all levels of driving. So, uh, the black nitrofill plastic floats a little bit more expensive, uh, and they do get uh, fuel soaked over time. But if you can get a set of those instead of these for boosting, uh, you'll do just fine. I'm gonna probably swap these in before I reassemble. Uh, coming down to the carburetor here, you can see I just got the body and plate just uh, on the little stand here. I'll do the best I can with one hand. But uh, the transition slots I was talking about earlier are. Uh, these little black squares right in there. You can see there's a little black square right there. Right in front of my screwdriver. It looks like a piece of dirt probably, but it's going to give you a better shot right there. Now, that is actually a pretty good configuration. However, I've already adjusted it. It was probably about twice that size. So instead of a little square, it was more of a longer rectangle, which isn't bad. But with for me, with I'm having um, idle issues with... Um, either it being too rich and then coming off of idle into acceleration I was getting a lean bog now basically the richness is being you know in addition to the idle circuit I'm getting too much fuel from that uh, because it was too long and then when you go to hammer the gas you're not getting the uh, full power from this because it was already running in idle and you end up um, with a lean bog because the accelerator pump uh, this what would be here uh, it doesn't doesn't have enough to keep you, I guess, in the proper fuel range. That's how I generally understand it. So that being said, I've adjusted this, and then on this side, I've done pretty much the same thing. Now this is, again, mechanical secondary. Uh, these don't need to be open, but if you look hard there, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, right in there, I've got the transfer slot on that side just slightly exposed. And you can adjust that one by turning the little flathead screw that's in here. Uh, that allows you to adjust the secondary plates and of course the idle screw that's right here does from the other side does the primaries so that's the configuration I want to have uh, initially I may need to tweak that slightly but I think what I'll try to do is adjust the idle from now on uh, with the secondary plate if I need a little bit more air I'll open it if I need a little bit less I'll try to close it just a bit but I think that is going to make a, a much bigger difference as far as the rest of the carburetor goes uh, I've got the uh, orange cams or maybe it might be red actually originally uh, in there and the normal just a smaller size accelerator pump none of the major ones 
Uh, I had a throttle plate issue here. I, it was just a hairline crack. I didn't like it, so I JB welded that a while ago. And um, same thing was with this here. I saw this in another video. I think it goes back to a, a forum post by a guy named Hanger. Uh, he made a thing here that says that uh, this is where the choke um, would gone here. Then the plate across here. And then there'd be a, uh, a lever that goes down. Now I plugged that hole with JB Weld. I went a little bit excessive. To do that, um, I just put a piece of tin foil underneath. I should have shoved it up in there and then um, poured some in from the top. And it kind of made a bit of a puddle there, but the tin foil prevents it from dripping down all over the place and uh, ends up sealing that hole up real nice. So now I won't lose boost through my carb hat and through this hole and it'll all go where it's supposed to go. You can technically mill off the uh, the choke horn here if you really want to, uh, to gain an extra airflow. Honestly, with the choke off there, I mean, I you know probably would get what, one or two or three or whatever percent um, airflow increase from that, I think. But um, I honestly have to think that there may be some advantage to division there. So I'm just going to leave it. Something you can do though is increase the length of these air intake uh, horns here uh, with some hose or even some brake line into the carb hat to, pr to allow um, better uh, airflow into those two points. I'm not going to worry about that too much. All right, so I'm going to take a minute to talk to you about the metering blocks here. As you can see, I got the secondary metering block is the one without the power valve. This, of course, being the power valve here. There's nothing on, on this one, uh, on this particular carburetor. Uh, and uh, other than that, it's it's pretty basic. There's uh, 65 size jets. So these two jets here are still 65s. Um, that was originally what was in the primary spot, so I dropped them down, ordered a set of 58s for the primary. Now these 58s, you can see they're new, they look shiny, are, um, are just right for getting it so that I can drive at a decent uh, air fuel ratio in on just cruise. Uh, so far they've been working really well. I'm glad I didn't go any lower or higher at this point. Once it gets turbocharged, who knows, it's going to have to be maybe increased. It's hard to say, it depends on where the turbo comes in, but we'll get to that at the time. Uh, power valve is a 10.5. Um, I get between 18 and 20 inches of vacuum at idle, uh, which is great, uh, but um, the 6.5 that this thing comes with, unfortunately, just wasn't going to cut it. So this 10.5 was put in. I probably could have gone with a 10 or even maybe a 9.5, but either way, this opens when I need it to and is working well for now. Uh, it's quite possible that uh, I'll make some configuration changes and, and maybe I'll even get the uh, the vacuum up enough that the 10.5 will be just perfect. But for now, I'm not overly worried about it as long as it opens, whereas the 6.5 would never open. I'd never go below eight or nine inches of vacuum. So uh, something I do want to show you here, I'm going to try not to mess this up for myself, is I, I had to change some things. Now, like I said earlier, this carburetor is massive uh, for this car. So I was getting way too rich of a mixture at, uh, at idle. So what I did, and I'm trying to get this off here, and you can see this here, right in here, this is the idle restriction uh, port. I think that's what it's called. And you can see what I've got in there is two little, um, basically a piece of wire. What it is, is it's the inside uh, wire from a, um, I think it's a 16 gauge wire, maybe it's 14. Either way, very small. Uh, there's almost no way that you're going to be able to copy me because your configuration might be slightly different. By putting that wire in the hole, what that's done is restricted the amount of fuel that can pass through there. Um, just ever so slightly. It kind of tricks the carburetor into thinking that it has less CFM. So this is a 600 CFM. By putting the wire in there, you know, by some wild guess, we'll say that it thinks I've got a maybe a 500, you know, something like that, or even a 450. It's I don't even know. Maybe it's 550. I, I couldn't possibly know. But I do know that it went from being in the 9s and 10s air fuel mixture into the 12 to 13 by putting that in there. So as much as it seems like kind of a goofy hack, it uh, did actually make a, a pretty big difference, and I'm very happy with that. So uh, I'm going to put it back and leave that for now. Even though I've made changes to the transfer slots, uh, I'm not going to take that out just yet. It's fairly easy to pull the main metering block and take those out if I had to. Of course, you could use thicker pieces of wire um, or even thinner if you could find them, and uh, that would allow you to customize um, 
your air fuel mixture just that much more than what these uh you know these will do on the outside all right so the black nitrofill floats are installed it's just basically two screws you have to remove the needle and seat to get them out and then you just pull them out and they come out as an assembly that looks uh well something like this i guess but uh of course black uh, once those are put in to adjust them you have to get them so that they're basically level because when you have it in the car you want it so that the fuel level is right below this sight plug here so to do that the for just a, a sort of guess way to do it turn it upside down and that should be level. You can see here it, it pops up and down. So to get that level, you just basically loosen this uh, lock screw here and then you adjust the nut below it. Uh, if you basically screw it down, it'll raise it up. So what you do is you just turn it upside down and just uh, tighten the, the nut there and it will raise this up. And you just wanna get it so that it's raised up to be about level like that. You don't want it down further. And as long as your spring is good, you should be fine. And and that's that. So you just do that to both fuel bowls, and that's that setting. Uh, next setting you can do without anything is the idle mixture screw. That's that uh, screw on the side there. This carburetor has one on each side of the main block, but none on the secondary. Some have a four uh, point idle screw thing, four screws, but this only has two. Uh, what you have to do to get this just right is basically tighten them all the way in gently. You don't want to damage the tip of the screw because it's kind of like a soft point. Uh, and then once you get it all the way in, you just turn it out one and a half turns. So one and a half complete turns. What I usually do, I'll try to show you here, is I get it tight and then I go basically three half turns. I do the one, match it to the same spot on the turn, and then I do two, match it to the same spot on the turn, and then three. That makes sense to me. Uh, you can do one and a half complete turns, or you can do three half turns, whatever works for you. Do that to all of the idle mixture screws, and that'll be a good point for starting the car. Doesn't mean you're gonna end up there by any means, but uh, just keep in mind that all of the screws have to be adjusted the same for a consistent uh, feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together now and tighten it up on the car, and we're gonna see how it works. All right, so last adjustment we'll do before we start the car is just the accelerator pump. Um, not gonna make a big difference in starting the car, but uh, these little uh, levers here, when you pull the throttle, they press down onto this lever, which presses up on the diaphragm on the bottom of the fuel bowl, which squirts some fuel. Um, now, what, I, what happens to me usually is when I put it back together, uh, especially on the primary side, because I can't see it, I uh, forget about the lever and I let the lever just sort of flop upwards and then this just is dangling there and then um, it doesn't do anything for you. Um, but beyond that, if you actually have it set up properly like this, um, I think you can see that very well, but um, what you want is you want basically zero clearance. Uh, you want them to be touching so that they're, when the throttle does come down, it immediately engages the pump arm. You don't want any kind of gap between the two or else you're going to have a delay there which is going to cause problems with uh, acceleration. So as long as there's no clearance, so there we go, it runs. So all you can do is you can adjust the idle screw from underneath here like this or the one over there but you don't want to play with them too much because you don't want to affect the transition slots. You can go ahead and use a timing light and you can adjust the timing to affect the idle slightly. I think right now I'm running at about eight or so initial timing and at pretty close to uh, 36 or so uh, complete timing. So we hear. pretty high at about a grand right now not quite a grand drop it into drive it goes to about 750 or so seems to like that pretty well again thank you very much for watching you can check us out on Twitter and Facebook and uh, please subscribe on YouTube